how to use vector masks with shapes in Affinity Photo. And this can be used with any shape. So I'm just going to create a shape, just going to select a triangle. And I'm going to fill it with something, so swatches panel. Now, if you want the panels, go to View and Studio and Layers and Swatches. The key one really is the Layers panel. Because what you're going to do is you're going to create another shape and you're going to drag that shape onto an existing design. And that will mask that shape. So I'm just going to create any shape. Rounded rectangle, perfectly reasonable. I don't want to change the gradient. I don't want something that's complicated that because it's going to be a mask. I mean, I could use that, perfectly reasonable. But I'm just going to manipulate the gradient later. So go back to the layers, go to the top one and just drag it down and drag it to the side of that shape. And then you'll see it has masked the original triangle. And as simple as that. And you can move the mask around. It's a vector shape. You can move it around all over the place. You can also manipulate the vector. You can rotate it. You can scale it. Now, sometimes you find when you select the top shape, you can't select the top shape and move it around. But what quick way around that, if it doesn't let you, is simply just deselect the mask and then just move it around. Most times it does let you do it. I have found that it, it just sometimes it doesn't let you select the other shape. And that's a quick solution. Just deselect it and then you can manipulate the other shape. And of course, what you can do, you can rotate now with both the mask and of course the triangle selected. Rotation will rotate the lot, which maybe isn't what you want, or maybe it is. But what you can do, you can select just the mask and then rotate that and the triangle will stay in position or whatever other shape you of course got and you can resize it etc what you can also do is with that shape selected the mask you can go to the gradients and you can manipulate the gradients you can go to like the end stop what you can do you can change your opacity maybe reduce it down to zero percent doesn't have to be zero it could be fifty percent and then what will happen is you will see a faded, of course, depends on the actual position. You can see it faded now. So everything that was the transparency area is faded away from that original triangle, as well as the actual vector mask you've got around the triangle in the first place. So you can manipulate the content of the mask, the vector mask, as well as the shape of the vector mask. And you can move that around. And of course, you don't have to use linear. You could use radial, etc., for the gradient type. And you can, of course, manipulate further the stops and also modify the control points. What you can also do is you can convert to curves. You can convert both of them to curves. So once you've done that, simply go to now I'm using the triangle, I'm manipulating the top triangle shape. Now, of course, it now it isn't a triangle. It's more a arrow head shape. And you can manipulate it in all kinds of ways using the node tool. You can also go to the vector mask. And you can also convert that to curves as well. So they're all now curves. So you can see both are now listed as curves instead of their original names. And what you can then do is you can then use a node tool to manipulate. And you can also, of course, smooth the points using the convert command at the top. And you can continue to modify the gradient that was part of the vector shape mask. And you, of course, can still manipulate the one above as well. You can select that and you can still see the gradient there and manipulate that. Maybe go to the swatches, change the gradient up to you. What you can do, you can move the design around. Mask, obviously everything is relative, so it will move around with it, with the shape. What you can also do is hold down the alter option key and drag. So you'll end up with two shapes or three shapes or four shapes. 
and they will all have the same mask. And of course, you can rotate the design. You can also go to the mask of any of those shapes and independently modify that mask. Maybe change the gradient for that mask. Or maybe change the actual shape using the node tool. Or rotate it. But it's all independent of all of the other layers, even though they originated from that original design. And you can move them around, resize them, etc. And they're all controlled via this layers panel. What you can also do, of course, you can add to each of the layers things like layer effects. You can also add live filter layers if you wish. Up to you. I'm not going to do that in this tutorial. But you can go down, like also down to the FX and add some layer effects, maybe a Gaussian blur, drop shadow. And this is only to one of the shapes. Now, this is to the shape, this is to the, the polygon that I've created and not the mask. And you can blur it. So you can blur the shape. You can add, obviously, a bevel. Might not be very noticeable, particularly. And you can also, of course, add a drop shadow or outer shadow, as it's called in Affinity Photo. And you can see it getting slightly dark around the edge there. And of course, you can change the angle if you wish. You can close it as well. But that's to that shape. What you can also do, of course, is you can expand again. You can expand out that mask and shape set and add layer effects to the mask. And you can still manipulate, obviously, the shape itself. And you can see the layer effects apply. So you can select the mask. So now the mask is selected. You can continue to modify the mask. But what you can also do is you can go down the bottom and add effects to that as well. So you can deselect it if you wish, and you can see the other shapes. You can do that at any time. So just deselect them. They're still there. You can bring them back at any point. So you can select maybe another mask in another shape and maybe add a layer effects just by clicking the FX at the bottom. And again, adding a Gaussian blur to it. So you can blur the mask, the vector mask. And you can see the blur in there in the, in the mask. You've got straight line, the very sharp edge of the initial container shape. And also you can also go to the gain to the drop shadow or outer shadow and add an outer shadow to it as well. And so on and so on. So you can add a whole range. And also, of course, you can manipulate it even further with various other tools in Affinity Photo. Affinity is very, very flexible the way you can edit things. And you can manipulate them all via this layers panel. And you can continue still with that layer effects, still, of course, manipulate the mask itself, the actual shape of the mask, using the node tool. And you can bring back the other one as well. And of course, you can duplicate that. Or you can select all of the shapes. Now, all of the shapes, as well as the masks, are all being selected. And you go right click and group. So they're now all grouped. So one single group. What you can also do then, of course, is you can manipulate that group. So you can resize the group. And of course, everything is still relative. All the masks, all the shapes will be confined by that group. And you can rotate the group. And what you can also do, of course, is you can, weirdly, duplicate the group by holding down the Alter Option key to duplicate the design. And you can do that three or four times. And of course, you can then select all of those groups and group those by the same thing, by right clicking. Or you can manipulate a particular group. So you can go to any of those individual groups and expand out the group if you wish. Of course, what you can also do is you can add a mask to that group. So select that, select all of the groups. Again, right click and you can say group again. And now they're all grouped. And you can add a vector mask to that group. So again, go back to the, it doesn't have to be that shape. 
You can just quickly add that. And you can see what happens. It's added, not obviously in the group, but you can just drag it down. And if you just put it to the side of the group, then the mask for that vector shape will be masking that group of groups of groups. And at the same time, all of this is still editable. So you can go to the last panel and expand out all of the groups and manipulate any of the individual parts like the gradients or the, the actual mask shape or the shape of the content container. And you can add a gradient to that mask and manipulate it. And you can also convert that to convert curves via the layer menu and then use the node tool to manipulate that mask of the groups. Okay, so you can see the points can be moved around and you can go back to the top of the group and then move the group around or resize the group. And everything is still relative. Go back to the, the mask again. And if you wish, you can change the gradient. Go to the gradients in the swatches, add a different gradient, or maybe change the transparency. Change the angle, change the, the gradient type. And again, what you can do, you can add layer effects just by clicking the FX at the bottom with the mask selected. So what you can then do, you can blur or add a shadow to the mask. Close. So you can see the mask is the one that's selected. Now, of course, to make it easy for yourself, it might be easier if you just rename the entry each time to remind yourself that it's a mask. Then you can, of course, select the whole of the shape and you can expand any of the others. You can see all the structure. And, of course, you can then duplicate that and so on and so on. So you can create numerous and, of course, resize it. And also you can apply effects to it. but it's all until you turn it into a pixel layer, still editable, still live. It's still a, a feature that, you can, like I say, you can just expand those out, expand those out, expand those out, and then manipulate at any point until you do a rasterize or merge them together, you can manipulate them. And of course, they're only layers. So what you can do with layers, of course, you can, if you wish, you can go to blend modes and you can manipulate the blend modes. I haven't done that in this tutorial, but you can do that as well to create weird and wonderful combinations of colors. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to Graphic Extra channel. Always adding new tutorials about Photoshop, Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, Illustrator, and many, many others. Also, please add some comments, always appreciated. A dislike or like. Thank you much.